So is anyone using the KP3 in their guitar rig? I've seen it integrated here and there with like a few different bands, but mostly I've seen it with like keyboard players, not a lot of guitar players. So let me know in the comments if you are a guitar player and you're using the KP3 in your pedal board or in your guitar effects chain. So the KP3 could be a really fun creative tool to use in a guitar effects chain, but because the KP3 isn't really designed for guitar, it can be a challenge to figure out how to set it up and how to get it to sound good. So I'm gonna share with you how I've set mine up and now I've integrated it into my guitar effects pedal chain and how to get the best sounds out of it. I'll also show you something that you can do with the KP3 that you can't do with any guitar pedal out there to create some really unique original sounds. But before I do that, if you like my videos and you find them useful, please like this video and consider hitting that subscribe button. Because the KP3 is a stereo effects unit and because it has delays and reverbs, I generally like to use it in the effects loop if you aren't familiar with what an effects loop is, essentially it takes the signal in the amp after it hits the preamp, but before it hits the power amp section of the amp and sends it to whatever effects you might have in the effects loop and then returns it back into the amp and then it hits the power amp section of the amp and ultimately the speaker. But I don't use an amp. I use the DSM Humboldt simplifier which is essentially an amp simulator like the Strymon Iridium or the Walrus ACS-1, but it's a little different. First of all, it's an all analog signal path. There's no digital IRs in this thing, but more importantly, it's stereo out, has stereo XLR out on the back, and it has a stereo effects return loop built in. This allows you to use stereo effects and get stereo output of the simplifier using the effects loop. So let's make it really simple. Say I'm only using an overdrive, a delay, and the KP3, of course. So how would I set this up? Well, first I'd have my overdrive, my guitar goes into that, and then out of that overdrive into the input of the simplifier. Next, I'm going to go out of the effects loop send from the simplifier into my delay pedal. Now I'm gonna go out of my delay pedal into the mic input of the KP3. And now we use really the only special cable I'm gonna need. Everything else so far has just been regular guitar patch cables. This is an RCA to quarter inch cable. I'm gonna go out of the KP3's RCA output on the back of the unit into the quarter inch stereo effects return of my simplifier. A couple things to check on the KP3. I turn the mic trim all the way down and make sure the mic input is selected on the input toggle. Then I make sure that direct is selected for the connection type in the back. Now let's make some noise. I'm monitoring my input gain with the peak indicator on the KP3 and I'm adjusting my input volume to make sure it stays in the green to yellow range. Now it's time to add some effects with the KB3. I'm gonna select one of my favorites. It's this mod delay thing, and I'll just play some and run my finger on the pad to find a sound I like. Once I find something, I'll engage the hold button and keep that position on the pad. I can dial in how much effect I want by using the effects depth knob. And there it is, I'm using the KP3 in my guitar effects chain. I can pick any effect on the KP3, find a position on the pad, press the hold button, and now I've got all the KP3 effects at my disposal in my guitar effects chain. Some of the delay and LFO modulation effects even have tap tempo, which you can see by the blinking BPM light, and there's a bunch of stereo effects in the KP3 as well. Adding this delay pedal can really make things interesting. I'll engage the delay and then use another effect on the KP3. So far, we've seen that the KP3 can be a really cool addition to any guitar pedal chain, but everything we've seen so far can be done with any delay, 
reverb or modulation pedal. What if I told you that the KP3 can do things that no guitar pedal on the market can do? By using the pad motion function on the KP3, you can create custom effects paths for any effect on the KP3 for hands-free manipulation of the effect. I'll start simple and just use a filter. Then I hold the pad motion with one finger and draw on the effects pad to record the motion. And then as I play, that pad motion is applied to the effect. <laughs> The only limitation is that the pad motion recording is limited to just a few seconds. While there are some really cool sounds you can get by using the filter, modulation, delay, and reverb effects, there are some other very unique, very interesting sounds you can get with some other patches in the KP3. Let's take a look at the grain and loop effects, for example. While these may not be super intuitive for playing guitar, just playing around with these effects can unlock some really creative ideas that you can't really fine with other guitar effects pedals. Now there's a lot more you can do with the KP3 obviously. Like you can use a looper pedal to loop phrases and record them into the sample banks and resample those phrases to stack effects. But just by using the touchpad and some of the more unique patches in the KP3, it becomes a really interesting tool that you can do a lot more than most effects pedals out there. So what are some of the drawbacks? Well, it certainly would take up a lot of space on a pedal board and you can't power it with a simple nine volt power supply. Also, there isn't really a way you can use this thing with your foot. I mean, I guess you could, but it would be a little cumbersome. So that was a really long video about using the KP3 as a guitar pedal. And if you made it this far, I hope you found some of this stuff useful. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.